Well, my next guest has a plan to get past all of this nonsense and whether it cuts really a cut by really cutting spending and by really cutting out the gimmicks. Republican Senator John Thune of South Dakota joining me for this exclusive chat. Senator, good to see you. I do want to get to your plan because I was looking at it, Senator, and it makes great sense, which means it's going nowhere. But having said that, <laughs> in all, I kid. But what do you make of what this uh, gentleman was just reporting? And I've heard others saying it as well, that the cuts in this sort of uh, stopgap uh, spending measure were not what they appeared or even appear to be? Well, I think it was the best we could hope to achieve under the circumstances, Neil. You know, obviously, uh, a lot of us would like to have seen uh, bigger spending reductions, but given the fact that you have a Democrat Senate and a Democrat White House, being able to achieve the level of spending reductions that, uh, that we did in this continuing resolution, uh, I think in the end is a victory. Now, we can uh, dispute about the, the various, uh, you know, how the cuts would be distributed and that sort of thing, but the point is we're reducing spending. That doesn't happen around here very often. And it gets the, spend, the debate about spending billions behind us and still allows us to focus on the debate about saving trillions by focusing on the 2012 budget and the debt limit votes which are coming up ahead of us. I guess what's frustrating, sir, is the billions we thought we were cutting um, were not nearly as many billions. Well, I think the thing that we all want to see is we want to reduce the, the baseline spending, and that's where our side was trying to focus on reducing the discretionary part of the budget because gotcha. that would reduce the baseline, and that saves, as you know, hundreds of billions of dollars more over a 10-year period. And that was the, the focus of all this. I think in the end there was a compromise reached between the White House and the lead negotiators on our side. But the point of it is we are reducing spending for the first time in, in at least a decade. And you don't and see this being jeopardized, Senator? See continue. You don't see this What's being that? jeopardized in, uh, either I, in the House or Senate with a final vote? I don't think so, only okay. because we, we, we've, gotten, we've gotten all we can get. Now, bear in mind again, this is a bill that the president is going to have to sign into law that we're going to have to pass through a Democrat Senate, and it may not be perfect, but under the circumstances, it is what we can get done. Uh, we are reducing spending. We are reducing the overall cost of government for the first time in over a decade, and now we can start talking about the trillions of dollars we need to start shaving out of the budgets in the future. Um, one of the things that has impressed me most over your career, Senator, I've admired on both sides here, and I think they would readily agree, you've tried to be the adult in the room on these discussions and go uh, beyond the political heat of the moment and the extremes. And even when it comes to dealing with these budgets in the future, you want to throw out the game plan and the ways in which we've been doing it. Uh, one idea is to make this a two-year affair. Could you explain what you mean by that? Right. Well, I think every year we, we, do, we go through this process. And last year is a good example. Congress didn't pass a budget. It's right. the most fundamental responsibility we have as elected officials to, to the taxpayers, and it didn't happen. Not a single appropriation bill passed. And so the reason we're even having this debate about this continuing resolution is because it's the unfinished business of last year. We're cleaning up the mess that Congress made last year. And, and so we have a broken budget process. And what I'm simply saying is what we ought to do is instead of doing a budget every year, do a budget every other year. Do it in a non-election year when you don't have election year pressures. And then in the, non or in the election year, do oversight and actually look for ways to save money rather than ways to spend money. I think that would be a better way of managing the nation's finances. And it would ensure, at least hopefully, in that even in that odd numbered year that we are passing a budget in appropriation bills but doing it in a more thoughtful way rather than the rushed way that we do it now if if we do it at all but no offense to your colleagues not a lot is done thoughtfully and in an election year whether it's a two-year deal or not um, if they were to revisit budgets that might or might not be controversial they'll they'll change them right well, they, I mean, there's always the chance that they could do that, but there, there's a provision in our bill that makes the, the resolution binding, which it isn't today. It's very easily waived. We have emergencies declared all the time. If there's something that somebody wants to spend money on, we just declare it an emergency. So and how so would my, you make yours any more urgent and unbreakable? Well, my legislation changes that so that it, it does away with this abuse of the, of the term emergency. It changes the PAYGO rules, which have been abused. That's how he, health care uh, reform was paid for by double counting revenues in the various trust funds that we have. So it means, makes a number of major changes in the way that we do the accounting here, the budgeting here in Washington. And it's long overdue, Neil. We cannot continue on this current path because we're headed for a train wreck. We've got to change the way that Washington does its business. And although glam, our budget reform is not a glamorous issue, it would fundamentally change the way that we do things here. But all of this comes uh, ahead of the president's sort of revisit to a debt uh, solution tomorrow that's presumably going to include tax hikes in the mix. 
Uh, John Boehner just put out a statement a little while ago, Senator, saying that if the president is willing to offer serious proposals that grow our economy, preserve and protect programs such as Medicare, Medicaid, and set us on a path to pay down the national debt, we're open to hearing them. However, if the president begins his discussion by saying we must increase taxes, I'll go on here, my response will be clear, tax increases are unacceptable. Do you share that view? I do. I think this, what we have in Washington is not a revenue problem, it's a spending problem. And Paul Ryan demonstrated last week that you can do this. You can create a pathway that is a much more sustainable future for this country fiscally without raising taxes. And I think the worst thing you could do in the middle of an economic downturn is raise taxes. It isn't necessary, uh, but I know the president's under a lot of pressure from his constituencies to make that a part of his proposal. But I think that's great. I think we'll start the debate. I mean, it's not great that he's going to raise taxes, but I think it's great that he's going to But if you go into discussions and you say one of the key tenets the president has is to throw uh, tax hikes into the mix and you say no, um, I just have a feeling, Senator, we're going to be revisiting this 11th hour. Will the government shut down or won't it shut down as we hit this debt ceiling? Well, the thing we ought to do in the lead up to the debt ceiling, Neil, is, is actually put a statutory cap on the amount the government can spend as a percentage of our total economy. As you know, uh, we are at the highest level right now of federal spending as a percentage of our GDP that we've been literally in the last half century since World War II. And we have the highest debt to GDP that we've had literally in the last half century since World War II. And so the issue around here isn't revenues, it is spending. And that's what we've got to focus on first. And what I would like to see in the lead up to the debt limit is a debate about putting the brakes on that and actually putting a cap, a statutory cap, and obviously you couldn't do it overnight, but where we get back down to a more normalized place in terms of spending as a percentage of our total economic output. We cannot continue to grow that uh, relative to our economy or we're going to end up like a, a Western European social democracy. That's the path we're on right now. That's a low blow right there, but Senator, it <laughs> uh, makes a lot of sense. Good seeing you again. Thank you very much. Good to be with you, Neil. Thanks. John Thune,